<laughs> well, welcome, 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 welcome everyone. Welcome yes, to yes. A, another midweek Bible study here yes. at Psalm yes. 91 Ministries. Hallelujah. We're just Hallelujah. so glad to have you. Welcome um, those that are in the audience. Give yes. yourselves a hand. Amen. Um, Amen. To our online audience, welcome. Listen, yes, tune welcome, in, tune welcome. in. Listen, uh, for those that are new to our live, that are new to our stream, um, I am Pastor Jay, uh, I'm Pastor John, aka Pastor Jay, and this is my lovely wife, my rib, Lady K. Well, it's yes. Lady Kim. Yeah. <laughs> Lady K. Amen, amen. And so, uh, we're so excited to, to, to go into this, uh, next, this teaching. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 Um, but before we do, let's have a word of prayer first, Lady, would you mind? All right. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this another day to come and dive into your word. We ask, Father, that you meet us right here. Help us to understand. Give us understanding. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge, Lord, as we dive into your word. Reveal yourself to us, God. Help us to understand you better, Lord, that we can do your work in the earth, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We magnify you. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, open our hearts to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm just going to ask us all to stand up. Stand up as we just sing a song of worship unto the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We just thank you, God. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if you've got a testimony, you know you can give God praise. If, you, if God has done anything for you, you can give him praise. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you. We thank you. There's none like you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonder. For to me, hallelujah, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins Upon that cross. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. thank you, Jesus. There is thank none you. like you. There thank is none you, like you. There's none Hallelujah. like you in the earth. There's none like yes. you in the yes. in the yes. universe, God. There's yes. none like you, yes. Lord God. Lord, we thank can look you, high Hallelujah. and low. Hallelujah. We can look Hallelujah. all around, God. Yes. There's no one yes. like you. Lord Hallelujah. God, you took our sins. Yes, God. Yes. Yes. Placed yes. them on the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So our lives, our wandering eyes, our drinking, yes. our everything. You everything, nailed it to everything. the cross, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Thank God. We give you praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank we give you Thank praise, you. Lord Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. 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 Lost in sin, God. Jesus. Didn't know our way out, God. We were broken. Broken, God. Broken. And then we found you. Yes. Yes. Because you found us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then we found you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. But you first found us. Yes. So I say, and then we found you. Yes. Come on. But he first found us. God, we thank you. Thank then you. we found you, God. We found yes. you because you found us. You said the the word said that no man come to the Father except yes. the Spirit draws yes. him. Lord God, you were seeking after us when we were lost. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Then we found you. Yes. But you first found us. Yes. Glory to God, we give you praise. Lord God, we give you praise. Adonai, Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh, the great I am, Elohim. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, you're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, worthy, worthy. So we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. 
Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may take your seats in the name of the Lord. God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Mm. Well, so we, uh, ooh, Jesus, thank you. Yeah, he's good. Amen. So we have been um, doing a study on the book of Acts. Now, as we normally do, what is our practice? This is this is a dialogue, right? Yeah. Not a monologue. monologue. What does that mean? Exactly. Is it a dialogue? You talk back to us. Yeah. So if you have questions, you know, listen, and, and I'm the first to tell you, if we don't have answers, we're committed to find the answers for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's no, um, nobody knows everything, right? right? We study to show ourselves approved. Yes. Um, however, if I don't know, I promise you, I'm going to say, hey, listen, can I get a week on that one? <laughs> right? All right. <laughs> um, That's fair. Um, and so let's, let's deal with each other fairly, right? Yes. And so, uh, uh, but I have been studying this word since I was a young boy, probably about seven years old. I've been studying this word. Uh, and so as much as I have, uh, that's what we will give, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. From a quick review, we are on chapter two of the book of Acts. We know, um, does anyone remember um, anything about chapter two? So we read verses one through 14 last week. Anything, does anything stand out to anyone about Acts chapter two, what we covered last week? Something that was discussed on Sunday well, too. <laughs> Go ahead. They were speaking in tongues, uh, and the Holy Spirit fell. They began speaking in tongues, and uh, people of different nationalities uh, could understand them in their like language. And, amen. And so uh, that was one thing that took place. Yes, it was the day. Uh, chapter two focuses on when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon, um, was released mm-hmm. to the believers, right? Yes. Um, and on Sunday, Sunday marked uh, many in the Christian faith celebrated or recognized it as Pentecost, which um, does anyone remember what the name Pentecost means or what it comes from? Oh, yes. Go, Gabby. 50, 50, 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. Yes, so Pentecost, the word penta, or the, the prefix penta means five, like pentagon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, penta means five. Penta, penta, Pentecost mm-hmm. is the Greek word, right? Uh, and is the Greek word for 50 days after Passover, all right? So 50 days after Passover, where actually the Jews did not refer to it as Pentecost, we call it that today. The Jews yes. at the time yes. referred to it as the Festival of Weeks, mm-hmm. right? Or the Festival of Harvest. Or the third one would have been the Festival of the First Fruits. Mm-hmm. And this was one of three big celebrations that the Jews or yeah, the Jewish people uh, recognize every year, right? There's three big ones. The first one is Passover. The second one is the Feast of Harvest or the Feast of what we call Pentecost now, right? But during that time, it was the Feast of, they called it Feast of Weeks. Mm -hmm. And the reason they called it Feast of Weeks was because it was, it was coined that seven weeks following Passover, um, after the second day of Passover. So Passover lasted seven days, right? So the second day of Passover, it said seven weeks after Passover. So seven times seven is what? 49, Mm -hmm. right? So plus the one day which started Passover. So that's where we get Pentecost. There you go. That's where we get the 50 from. So that's Pentecost. That's when we talk about Pentecost. All right. Now, the reason why this is important is because this is the time of harvest, the first harvest. So the other reason why they refer to this as the first fruit, the time of the first fruit, is that that was the time where the every Jew all over, wherever you were, you had to come and you had to bring a first fruit art offering, like the first of your harvest. Yes. Okay. Um, and we read about how Jesus had come in chapter one. Uh, I'm sorry, am I stealing Show. all of the info? Come on. Anybody else want to reveal himself? Jesus, re- um, Jesus had, yes. yes. So in chapter one, Jesus, had, uh, the chapter one of the book of Acts 
starts with Jesus continuing his, I will call it his campaign um, or his, um, what do we call it? Sightings, the sightings of Jesus yes. uh-huh. after his resurrection. So you know how you got people say there were sightings of Elvis or there were sightings of Tupac, right? <laughs> well, there was some serious <laughs> sightings. They <laughs> weren't no Jesus, right? They weren't Jesus. So they were. So Jesus showed up for forty days, right? You know, multiple times for forty days after his resurrection. On the fortieth day, he rose up. The Bible says he came up. The Lord took him up in a cloud. An angel sees Jesus and says to him, or says to the disciples, the angel come is, is mm-hmm. you know, as the people are watching Jesus ascend, an angel looks at them and says, hey, you know, why are you guys so shocked? Why are you so surprised? This same Jesus that you have seen go ascend up into heaven shall in like manner return. He shall descend from heaven. So when we talk in the last days, the Bible talks about he's going to return in the clouds. Yes. So the same way he went up, He's going to come come back, and this is also important. From an uh, they refer to as eschatology, eschatology, y'all give me eschatology statement, right? Which, in 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 layman's terms, it just talks about the last days, right? Um, So, um, so when we, you know, when the Bible says. Listen, there's going to be days where people are going to come up and they're going to say, I'm Christ, I'm Christ. Mm-hmm. Anybody remember a man by the name of David Koresh? Yeah. Yes. David Koresh, right? In, I think it was in Texas. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, at first it was just a group of religious people. And then eventually this man started believing he was Jesus. And the people began to believe he was Jesus. Mm-hmm. Right? So Jesus tells us, he says, listen, if you hear somebody say Jesus is in the mountains, mm-hmm. don't go. Because the same way he went up, he's going to come back. Right. right? So these are, how do we, how do we watch for Jesus return? Yes. All right. So that's, that's Acts chapter one. After they leave, he says, now, before he left, his instruction was pray that you yeah. pray for the mm-hmm. gift, pray and wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, this can be, can, may sound contra, um, contra, what is it, controversial? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, to, to, to some. But we're going to go through this teaching line by line. All right. And so we find ourselves in chapter two. In the beginning of chapter two, they're praying. The Bible says there's 120 of them that are praying in the upper room. Anybody remember the song by Mahalia Jackson? In the upper room. In uh, the With my Lord. With my Jesus. Please don't start. Okay. I'll start singing. How I got over. Uh, How I got over. Come on now, stop playing, man. You ain't gonna get me out the seat. Like, man, he died for me. Come on, man. Come on, come on. He come on. As he hung on Calvary. I Go ahead. Uh, give that man a mic. Thank you for having so I'll let me stop. <laughs> so so this is just kind of like we're just setting just kind of like setting the context of where we are now. The Holy Spirit has fallen. The Bible says there was a sound of rushing of a rushing mighty wind. And I think, do I have this slide from a few? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, so um, now imagine that you hear this, this sound, boom, almost like a freight train. It's like a rushing mighty wind. And the Bible says that they were cloven tongues of fire that sat over their heads. Now, if you can imagine that, now you're in a room, it's got to be a pretty large room mm-hmm. to hold 120 people. Yes. And they're all praying. Now, for 10 days, they've been praying. For 10 days, they've been praying. Wow. And, and this should be part of a lifestyle of believers. This is why the, you know, this is also referred to as the birth of the church. Mm. The birth of the church. Yes. Right? So they're standing there. And then as they're standing there, they're looking and f- like fire is above their heads. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, anyone I want to add before we move into w- where we are now? Okay. Now, um, one thing that I'll take that off because I know it's going to get. One thing that we that we spent a little time discussing was because um, depending on what denomination you come from. Um, uh, now, if you have a question, just, you know, you can ask for a mic or whatever, just so that the people on the live 
can hear. Can hear. Also, um, I need to make sure that I share it myself. But um, uh, let me know if it, what questions come up on the live, if you don't mind, Minister. So, the uh, one of the things that we we talked about last week was when the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Spirit fell. Um, let's just let's just pull it up on the screen. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. Now, the reason why this is an interesting what's happening is very, very interesting. Interesting is because this is the festival of weeks. So every Jew all over the world is congregating to at Jerusalem at this time. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, when when it says they they heard everybody speaking their own language, this sec, next set of scriptures is going to reveal that. First lady, would you mind um, reading? Uh, you can read from seven. Verse seven, right there. Mm-hmm. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are you are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Now these are the I got you. Yes. All right. <laughs> all right. And Verse nine says, How we how I mean, here we are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus. And the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya and Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. That's why when you read it in the King James Version, it uses the term proselytes, right? Mm -hmm. A proselyte was a person who converted to Judaism. Mm -hmm. So remember, Sammy Davis Jr., he would have been considered a proselyte. He converted to Judaism. Mm -hmm. All right? So um, so they, uh, verse 11... Christians and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues. So, so we're reading from the New King James Version. I think I put up here um, New mm-hmm. Living Translation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, both Jews and converts, da, 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 da. Okay. Christians okay. and Arabs. And we, we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. Now you got to imagine this. So, okay, let's just, just picture this. You, you, you hear this huge gust of wind, mm-hmm. right? The people are all filled with, like they don't. We don't know what this is. Nobody knows what this is. What has taken place here? They just hear them speaking. Now, what is interesting is the miracle is that they uh, they began to speaking speaking in other tongues. Now, this is actually um, a reference back to a scripture. Did I cite that? Yeah, it's uh no no no. Um yeah, well can somebody find Luke chapter five verse thirty seven? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all gonna do some work today. <laughs> uh, verse thirty seven. Okay. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. For the new wine would burst the wine skins, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine must be stored in new wine. Skins. I'm sorry. Uh, let me get you another scripture. Joel two twenty eight. That's Old Testament. Minor prophet. <laughs> That's where I wanted to be. Joel Joel two twenty eight and read twenty thirty two. Okay. Yep. Then after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on servants, men and women alike. And I will cause wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord arrives. You can pause right there. So that was the scripture that prophesied this day coming. So in Joel, Joel prophesied that this was going to happen. And God was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. 
That's why this moment in history is so is 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 celebrated and is recognized again as the birth of the church. Because this is also when believers accessed or found that they had power, right? Mm-hmm. They had power. Um where do we stop? If someone can take it over from there. Verse 12, Verse 12. please. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying they're dr- just drunk. That's all. Um, so they began to say that they were um, drunk. And the King James Version says that says others mocking said they are full of new wine. Mm-hmm. New wine. I want to ask you guys, what... Um, uh, or now you can go to Luke, or I'll go to Luke chapter five, verse thirty-seven. Um, it's this is a this is a um, we say a parable that Jesus gave in Luke chapter five. Right, you should write this down. Um, thirty-seven through thirty-nine says, "No one puts new wine into wines into old wine skins, or else the new wine will burst the wine skins and be spilled, and the wine skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wine skins." And both are preserved. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new, for he says the old is better. Now, this reference should also be referenced back to Jesus' first miracle. Anyone know his first miracle? Turning water into wine. Right? And what was the, what was said from those who drank the wine that he turned from, turned from water to wine? Does anyone know? That it, that it was what better than mm-hmm. it, it was, was better. He yeah. said, "They so why would they wait? Why would he wait to bring the best out now?" Amen. That's right. So what happened typically in a wedding, you would give people the good stuff, mm-hmm. the expensive First. stuff, <laughs> and so the governor or the person who who was like the big man of the wedding, after he tasted the wine that Jesus had made, he said, "He said this guy. He said this wine." Is better than what what you gave you you served first. Yeah. So what the Lord is telling us is that the there is a the 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 old is great, but there is a new covenant coming. The old experience was great, but there is a new one that comes from God that is better. Um, he references, uh, uh, I think, uh, my wife. We were talking in the car earlier, uh, and we were talking about the, the the old covenant versus the new covenant. Yes. When we talk about these two things, we talk about two contracts. Mm-hmm. A covenant is essentially a contract mm-hmm. that is sealed in blood. Yes. Right? So God, the, when we read Genesis through Micah, mm-hmm. Malachi, no. Malachi, that's a contract. That's considered the old covenant. Mm-hmm. Matthew through Revelation is considered the new covenant. Mm-hmm. And so this new covenant in my blood, right? Because mm-hmm. a covenant has to be sealed in blood, mm-hmm. right? Or that during this time anyway. Um, so anyone want to, um, I want to ask the question, why, and any, I want, I want new folks, hold on. This one, <laughs> why do you think he dis- uses wine as a metaphor for the Holy Spirit? Because we're going to get there, but, but he uses wine as a metaphor for the Holy Spirit. Anyone? Go ahead, just just holler something out. Don't worry about. Listen, I I I I love I love taking chances, right? Be okay with being with not necessarily being a hundred percent right. It's the journey. Mm-hmm. That's how we that's how we learn. Yeah. Okay. So go for it. Come. Oh, I just like think of the color of blood. The mm-hmm. color. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's why the, the blood, go ahead, the wine represents the blood where? Communion. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. We got all right. All right. <laughs> right, right. So the, the blood represent of uh, the wine represents the blood when we do communion, right? Yes. The wine is there's a particular reference to this this new wine that he talks about. Because the people began to mock in verse 13. Others in the crowd ridiculed them saying they are just drunk. Uh, that's all. I'm sorry. That neck, right? <laughs> um, they're just drunk. Now, what about? Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say when when you said they're just drunk. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm I'm gonna take. When you drink wine, 
you change, your attitude changes, you get drunk. Okay? Yeah. You get drunk. So now these people are taking on the Holy Spirit. Mm. So they're drunk too. But wow. they're drunk with the Holy Spirit. Come on, theologian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get drunk. <laughs> That's, but 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 that's what a, see the one of the reasons you, the Lord uses wine as a metaphor is because wine any alcoholic beverage right alters your behavior yeah right right yeah right now what about think about the statement that the crowd is saying mm-hmm. the crowd ridiculed them saying they're just drunk. What? How could you describe pe- a person's behavior if you had to eye somebody and say that they were drunk? They kind of slow moving, sluggish, like this kind of. Because that's not just that's not one drink, yeah. Right, that's not one drink. It's drunk is or several drinks, making noise. Yes, they can be rowdy. You drunk from being rowdy, but you also put up things. When I look at this, they could be drunk in the Lord and praising. So they're saying, yeah. oh, they're drunk and they're praising because they they don't really know what's going on. So mm-hmm. it's easier to say. It's, go drunk. ahead. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Right. And being drunk, it takes you out of your norm. Mm-hmm. Right? It takes you out mm-hmm. of your norm. So, so this had to be a very peculiar event. Mm-hmm. Yes. Meaning... For their, for what they are hearing and what uh-huh. they're seeing to be both impacted. Yes. So what, what happens is, so just imagine hearing this and, and, okay. But you're, you're from Russia and you're hearing it in Russian. Mm-hmm. You're from, you're from Italy. So you're hearing yeah. Italian. He said, how is it that we all hear every one of them speaking in our own language? Our native tongue. tongue, Right? So this is a huge miracle. And what they were saying was all in alignment. They were all saying the praises of God. Yeah. Now, I've been, look, in the book, now look, growing up, one of the reasons why I never, (laughs) and even, even when I wasn't like, really chasing after the Lord. One of the reasons I never got into drinking, just for me, is because I used to go to the barbershop as a kid and, and it, it had a, a traumatic effect on me. Because there was there was this particular drunk who would lean and fall asleep and almost fall asleep, lean on your shoulder and you'd be sitting there as a kid, as a seven, eight year old kid. It's like, oh Lord, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, you know, my parents keep me away from a lot of stuff. And so I'm seeing this and I said, I said, I don't want to be that. So I kind of, I in my mind, I had associated that experience. And I know that that's not the experience of, of, you know, drinking alcohol of every, every drink, but that was my experience. Mm -hmm. And so when I think of people being drunk, I'm thinking, like you said, I think somebody said slouch, slouched over, Mm -hmm. right? Not acting normal, Mm -hmm. not acting normal. Now the word, there's two Greek words that are used. The people, now Luke is Greek. The writer of this book is Luke, the same one who writes the gospel of Luke. Okay. Now he is Greek. He's a Greek physician by profession. Mm -hmm. So he is very detailed, right? Doctors have to be very, you know, particular. Mm -hmm. He uses a different Greek word for when the people, the crowd refer to their own language. Then he uses when he refers to what's happened, what's actually happening. Mm. So the, the, the Greek word that he uses is glossa, where we get glossary from. Mm. So when he says, and they spoke in other tongues, he uses the word glossa. Now this word references, uh, means, um, uh, uh, another or a strange language, right? Um, I, I, like a, it would be, it would just represent like a strange tongue or strange language. Okay. The other word that they use here when they said, um, you know, when they asked, you know, how is it that we hear them all in our own tongue? Mm-hmm. That word is dialecta, mm-hmm. which is where we get the word dialect from. Okay. And that word, it, um, means 
it, it's closer to a a language that you speak so proficiently, but it's not your birth language. Meaning you weren't you're you're proficient in it, but it's like that's why we get dialect. Meaning dialect is closer to a culture, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what the the word they use is dialect, mm-hmm. right? Meaning they got it down to the culture. Wow. Yeah. That's good. That's good. We hear them talking about the praises of God Amen. down to, you know, think about somebody from the country saying, talk. Yes. That low yes. good, that God is go good, 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 yeah. good. You know, he talks for, he, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sorry, that's the worst country yes. accent. <laughs> uh, forgive me, country folks. Okay, forgive me. All right. But, but that's what happened, right? And so they are mesmerized by what happens. Now, now we're going to go, um, move forward. Go for it. Elder Ruth said, "People, people's speech change when when they're drunk. Mm-hmm. Their speech changes. Mm-hmm. Yes, sometimes people get slurred. They get slurred mm-hmm. speech. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, she also says, the fire, wind, and water manifest on that day. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of, of rivers of living water. Mm-hmm. It's a reference. It's another scripture. I believe John, um, the Lord says in the Gospel of John, He says, mm-hmm. He says, out of your belly." shall flow rivers of living water. Living water is water that is connected to a, uh, it's like a stream mm-hmm. that is connected to a greater body of water. Yes. Right? So when we are connected, when we have the Holy Spirit, the, uh, our spirit is connected to a greater body of water. It's, it, it's, it's, it, it, you wouldn't use this term for a pond, mm-hmm. water in a pond, Correct. water that's water sitting. Yes. Right? That's living that's water. Mm-hmm. This is why, I remember the woman at the well, she mm-hmm. says, Lord, give me this living water that I yes. may not come back here again. Yes. Yes. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, verse 14. Um, anyone can take that. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk. As some of you are assuming, nine o'clock in the morning is too much, is, is much too early for that. All right. Now, if it was the guy in the barbershop, it wouldn't have been too early. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but <laughs> for a whole group. But like for 20, 120, 120 people yeah. in one place, that was too early. Yeah. Continue. I'm sorry. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike. And they will prophesy. Let's pause right here. So what we see is an a a unbiased, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes, an unsegregated mm-hmm. outpouring of yes. God's spirit. Yes. Remember, God's spirit was isolated to Israel mm-hmm. for the whole of the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. His spirit was isolated to Israel. Israel was the was the vehicle by which the earth would be blessed. Okay. Because Israel has rejected him, God says, I'm going to use a people, this is in Deuteronomy, I'm going to Mm -hmm. use a people that are not a people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to to provoke you to jealousy, Mm. right? So the reason why salvation is made available to us, part, there's a, not the reason, but one reason is to, for for God to move through us so heavily Mm -hmm. that it says to those that were part of that initial covenant, that it was only for them to say, oh my goodness, God is actually operating in these people mm-hmm. that were not a people. Mm-hmm. So he's you, he, he's actually utilizing us. I don't want to say using, but, <laughs> but I guess you could say he's yeah. using us. He's using us to provoke his, the, what we would refer to as his firstborn to jealousy, mm-hmm. right? He's blessing us, but while yes. blessing us, he's provoking them to jealousy yeah. to get right as well. Mm-hmm. If that make, does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we did, we, we went through, and I'm, we're not going to go through this again as far as the, uh, 
the breakdown of the differences in tongues, because we, we talked about that last week. Um, now, if anyone has a question about that, because we talked about that there are different types of tongues, mm-hmm. right? Um, I guess I'll just touch on it. Since I just right touch. Yeah. All right. So there are different types of tongues that we see in the Bible. Um, what we see here is the type of tongues, again, where it's, it's a, it's a, it's an, it's an, it's an, it's an unknown language. Okay. So you can't understand it. I can't understand it. However, there are times when God will reveal or will uh, supernaturally, Mm -hmm. as you're listening, if you like, and we, I know of where this has happened, Mm -hmm. where people who are listening, um, there was a, there was a, 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 a a Jewish woman, she came into a service and somebody started speaking in tongues next to her and she was just blown away. Mm -hmm. And she said, she's speaking perfect Hebrew. Perfect. Now, she was just, but God had opened her ears to hear. That's what the Bible says. Let he that has ear, ears, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. So God at times will open up our ears through the tongue. So that's, that's the one tongue that, which is our foundational traditional tongue. It's a prayer language. This is for one, it's used for edification. Uh, first, anyone who wants scriptures on this, First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2 and 4. I'm going to read it. It says, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. The word edify means builds up himself. Mm-hmm. So did you know that when a person is, when you're speaking in another, in that, uh, that supernatural tongue, you are actually building up your spirit man. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem is that many of us have seen is that most of us stop short. We get to tongues and we don't go any further. Mm-hmm. Right? Because Paul in the same chapter explains that there is another level. Mm-hmm. There's another level. All right? Uh, the second tongue we just kind of talked about is the foreign tongue where I just told you, you know, so so the, the first tongue, the traditional um, so I'm, I'm in my prayer closet and I'm praying, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. I just worship you. And then there are times that I may go into that prayer language. And one of the reasons why I do it is because I don't, I also, I, since I know what the scripture says, I says that, the, that my spirit is praying. Mm-hmm. This is also because I really don't want the enemy knowing what I'm praying about. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a way to, mm-hmm. Right. Now the, the the only problem with it is I don't know what I'm praying about, <laughs> right? But the spirit does. The spirit does. Yes. But we're going to explain that. All right. Um, the foreign tongue happens when the spirit falls and the hearer his or his hears his or her native language. The the third one is the public tongue. The Holy Spirit moved upon upon you. Right. You're in the service. Now the public tongue. Now I call it the public tongue. Okay. Um, just so it's easier to understand should be interpreted, but it requires an interpreter. Now, in verse 13, 1 Corinthians 14, chapter verse 13 through 14 says, Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Mm -hmm. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So here's the thing. When you pray in tongues, you can actually ask God, tell me what my spirit is saying. Most of us have never heard this scripture. And this is why we have never gone any further. Mm-hmm. Right? And when, when, what happens when God does that, that is a form of prophecy. Mm-hmm. Meaning where God is speaking through you. So that's when we go back to Joel chapter 2. And he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. And your slaves, He says, your slaves will prophesy. Yes. He says, this is going to be an unsegregated, yes. unrestricted. Correct. Any and everybody will have access to my spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 another form of tongues is when we talk about singing in tongues. And again, much of this happens as you progress in that gift. Right? It's like riding a bike. You get better riding, even though I don't know how to ride a bike. Don't y'all laugh at me too hard. Um, but you, I heard that you get better at it the more you do it, right? It's the same thing with the gifts, the gifts of the spirit, right? Um, singing in tongues, first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15, right? What is the conclusion then? 
I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. I mean, I'm, if I'm a pray in the spirit, I'm also going to pray, God, tell me what I, tell me what my spirit is saying. Mm-hmm. Tell me what my spirit is saying. Yes. For if I pray in the tongue, my spirit prays, but my, uh, no, I'm sorry. I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. So the Bible says I will pray with the spirit. That's meaning I'm praying in tongues. He says when I'm singing in the spirit. So there are times and I, I can't make myself do it. But there are times when you feel uh, that you, you're under the spirit of God and you, you, you just go. Hey, so, da, 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 bon, da. And I've, I've had it. And my sister actually told me, she said, John, you don't know. I mean, we were praying on the prayer call one time. She said, John, you sound and I, I don't know with with the I, I didn't you know she said John you sound African, wow. Mm-hmm. And and I was just you know we we just had a high time in the Lord, yes. right? And so um so that that's one. And then there is the counterfeit tongue. Let me I'll say this right before because it praying in the spirit builds up your faith. That it it also builds up your faith, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Elder. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then lastly, I'll say this is the counterfeit tongue. The counterfeit tongue, um, we've heard people use phrases like, who stole my Honda? Um, right? You ever heard somebody say, and if you say it fast enough, who stole my Honda? Who stole my Honda? Who stole my Honda? That's a counterfeit tongue. I mean, you're making fun of the gift of tongues. Yes. People do it, right? People do it. Yeah. And I think, and I would say that this is dangerous. Anything playing with the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. I would, I would caution, strongly caution against. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would strongly caution against. Yes. Right? Because as we go through, um, Acts, you're going to get to a person named, um, Ananias and Sapphira, and they played with the Holy Spirit and it cost them their lives. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. All right. So, <clears throat> um, all right. Okay, verse 16. Uh, verse 16. No, where did, where did you stop? I'm sorry. You stopped all the way down, didn't you? <laughs> verse 19. Mm-hmm. And um, would you mind finishing out 19? Yes, I'm finished. Uh, and I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. All right, we're going to pause right there. Now, what, what Peter does, this is Peter's, this is Pe- the, Peter transforms. Mm-hmm. So we get, you know, just a couple chapters ago, we had cussing Peter. Right, mm-hmm. <laughs> we had fussing Peter, uh-huh. <laughs> and you had fighting Peter, right? Uh-huh. And now we get the Holy Ghost filled Peter, wow. and he's preaching and sounding like Jesus. Wow. He's quoting scriptures. They, we don't, we never even see a time where Peter quotes a scripture <laughs> in all the four of the Gospels. We don't see no time where Peter quotes a scripture. Wow! Mm-hmm. Now he's quoting Joel. Yeah. Mm. And that was the point of saying the minor prophets, right? <laughs> Amen. There you go. And Bring you know what's, out. what's, what's, what's what interesting? Nuggets. Be, because the Lord said, you know, you come before, He said, don't think about what you're going to say. Yeah. The what Spirit, say. I think that's John chapter, um, 15, 14, 15, one of those chapters. He said, He said, don't think, don't prepare, don't try to, you know, when you go before, when they're being brought, they're being persecuted and you brought before, he said, don't try to plan out what you say. The Holy Spirit will guide you right. as to what to say. Right? Now, if this message makes you uncomfortable, understand that the Bible, uh, refers to the Holy Spirit as the comforter. Yes. Okay. Now I say this all the time. You're gonna hear it one more again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you only use a comforter when you're uncomfortable. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit has to first make you uncomfortable before He comforts you. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Now, <clears throat> the great and awesome day of the Lord is 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 uh is talks about the Lord's return. All right, the great and terrible the the, the one that says uh, terrible day of the Lord, but awesome day of the Lord is when He returns and He's going to come back for His you know His, his church and He's going to judge the earth and judge the world and things like that. Um, 
Now, it's important to note, you know, there's a lot of times when people say the last days, last days, last days. So keep in mind this, that the last days started when Jesus rose from the grave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand when we say the last days, it starts as soon as Jesus started back to life. So God says last days. And from uh, 33 BC, uh, AD, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Till now, it's all been the last days. Wow. Now notice that it says, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now this is something um, that we, we say, salvation is the foundation of the gospel. Now understand something, and I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna ask some questions on this one. What are we saved from? Mm. Yes, Lana. The whip. The whip. Oh, yeah. She said, "You think about Jesus being crucified, am I right?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. We didn't have to go through that because He went through it for us. Amen. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Gabby. God's red. Amen. Amen. Many times, as believers, we think that we are actually saved from Satan. We're not saved from Satan. And we're not saved from hell. We are saved from the wrath of God. The Bible says that we are saved from his wrath. Mm -hmm. This is part of the reason why God had to put Adam and Eve out of the garden. He said, because I have to, he said, I can't see you anymore because my holiness would destroy you. Mm -hmm. I, I like think of it like this. You're a police officer. Your brother is a drug dealer. For Thanksgiving, as a police officer, I said, now listen, I'm going to need you to not talk about your business. <laughs> because as a as an authority of the yeah, law, yeah. I am impelled, I am not only compelled, but I have to do something about it if I hear it. So I'm going to need some distance from you. Yeah. Yeah. So think of God as the judge. And his son, mm. meaning us, his children, yes. as we're all these drunks and liars and thieves and all Murderers of these things. And, and he says, listen, adultery. these are my children. Mm-hmm. So please, I'm going to need to put something in place. So this is why Jesus is referred to as the mediator, yes. right? The mediator. So he comes in between. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you don't mind, honey, just stand right here. So, so let's just say you stand as God in that position, right? You're sitting down, so it feels kind of judgy, right? <laughs> Step back. God, when he sees you, he sees all of your sins. So what Jesus does is he comes and he stands in your place. So that when you walk, and this is why we must walk with Jesus, because if we don't walk with Jesus and say, I walk this way and you walk this way, your cover is gone. Oh, no, I just went. I'm sorry. See, see, see she's, she's so used to walking with Jesus. Amen. <laughs> your cover is gone. And so this is why we must always walk with the Lord. This is the importance. This is the connection from the blood on the doorpost. He says on the, when they put the blood on the doorpost, go ahead, honey. When they put the blood on the doorpost, he says the angel of death, which was, which came from God. Remember in Egypt? Yes. He said it will see the blood on the door and pass by. That's why they call it the Passover. And that's why Jesus Christ is our new Passover lamb. Because he rep- his blood represented the door, the blood on our doors of our heart. Yes. So when God comes by saying, this one needs to be judged, he said, oh, there's blood the on blood that door. Comes. The blood comes. Death has already taken place. Because that's what happened. Death had to take place. So that's why we said the, the wages of sin is death. Mm-hmm. That is the cost of sin. Yes. It requires death. The pain. So when he sees you, he sees the blood spilled and he passes by. And this is the only way we can be in right relationship with Christ. This is the only way we can, this is the only way we can escape the judgment. Listen, the judgment's going to happen. People don't talk about the judgment no more, but the judgment's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And Peter is preaching so uh, prophetically and prolifically. Mm. 
the, all of these people are saying, wait, hold on, these are Galileans. These folks shouldn't be talking like this. There's no way this person knows they're speaking in Egyptian. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, I know we got to speak Spanish. What? Yeah. Okay. The time. Yeah. Um, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let's uh, say because uh, there there are some that say, "Hey, listen, you have to be um, baptized in order to be saved." They say that you have to do all of these works in order to be saved. Mm-hmm. The Bible says that, it says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Now that entails more than just calling, right? Like call Tyrone. <laughs> no, it calls. It entails more than that, <laughs> right? It entails calling on Him and making Him the Lord oh. over your life. Yes. See, most of us want to make Jesus. I'm just going all over the place. Yes, most of us want to make Lord. Jesus our landlord and mm-hmm. not our Lord. Come See, if, 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 as a landlord, you pay rent. He can't come into your home. See, as the Lord of your life, he can come into your home. He can he can invade your space. Yes. He can check and say, okay, okay, how, 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 how's the finances? Uh-huh. How, you see, he can come into any area of your life. Yes. I heard Michael Jr. He gave this story. He said, you know, most of us grew up in a home where there was one room that you couldn't touch. Uh-huh. <laughs> Anybody remember the plastic? Yeah. Oh, that's what I was boy. Plastic about. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. You, you, you know, you fall asleep. It's a hot day. You do. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. You feel sticky no. and everything. <laughs> if they let you yeah, sit in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, that was a room typically that where they, where, where, where grandma, yes. granddad, they, they put the best things yes. there. Yes. Mm-hmm. God wants access to every room of your heart. Yes. Every room. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want there to be any room he can't touch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any room he can't go in. And the funny thing about God is he don't go in and say, I can't believe you did this. Look at this room. Clean this mess up. He said, he gets in there and he starts like, taking a broom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sweeping. Yeah. He starts cleaning up. Mm-hmm. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Now, we talked about this last week that there are two different, when we talk about receiving the Holy Spirit, there's two different experiences. There is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That happens as soon as you call on the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes in immediately. Immediately. The second experience is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Baptism means, comes from a word that, uh, in, in the Greek, it's baptos, baptis, baptismos, mm-hmm. right? That means to sub- be submerged. So just like you're baptized in water, you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, where you're so submerged in the Spirit that you come out acting different. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, because for, for those, please, and I'm telling you all, listen, uh, and this is, maybe you may think this is promotion, but maybe I am, but there's good reason. On July the 8th, we are, we are, we are hosting, not here, we're going to, we have another location, we're going to be hosting. A spiritual gifts workshop. We're bringing in uh, a, a phenomenal prophetess who helps folks to find their spiritual gift. And I mean, this woman can uh, listen. I'm telling you, she'll turn around and not even look at you and be able to. You know, I know some people get nervous around prophets, but she'll turn around and not even look at you and begin to speak what thus saith the Lord and things that like blow your mind. Because God wants to show you that he's still working today. Mm-hmm. Right? Gideon had the same issue. Gideon, he, they were going under. They just, he just, everything was beaten up. They were, he was, he was sitting there, uh, threshing wheat in the wine press. The angel of the Lord comes to him. Gideon says, God, where are all the miracles we heard about? Yeah. Where are all the things you've done? Gideon had no idea that, that, that his father's had gone into idol worship, so it caused God to say, okay, you want that? I'm going to give you that. Let you yeah. mm-hmm. He had no idea that they were the contributors to, to that distance from God. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, Peter goes on, let me, let me try to at least read a couple more. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to, to you, um, people of Israel, listen, 
God publicly endorsed Jesus, the Nazarene, by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you all know, right? You well know. But God knew what would happen, and his prearranged plan plan was carried out when Jesus was, was betrayed. Now, I need you to understand that in order to be betrayed, you must first be befriended. Mm, come on. Right? And wow. so when we walk the walk of Christ, understand you're going to have a Judas experience at some point in time in your life. Right? With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and killed him. Mm. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grips. That's when we get the song, death could not hold him down. Right? King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope. This is found in Psalm chapter 16, verse 8 through 10. Did you know that much of the book of Psalms is actually what we call messianic prophecies, almost hidden like code? Mm. This is David speaks this in Psalm chapter 16, verse 8 through 10. No wonder my heart is glad. My tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul among the dead. Uh, King James Version says in Hades mm-hmm. or in hell. Well, uh, New King James says Hades. Um, that word translates as Hades, which means in hell. Because mm-hmm. we know that when Jesus died, he spent three days in hell. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, am I going too fast? Yeah. What do you got? Huh? Yeah. Yeah? No. Okay. No. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or your soul in hell or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself for he died and was buried and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. Mm-hmm. And for those that, oh man, I'm just seeing so much. I didn't note the word soul, soul, okay. Uh, understanding when a person dies, if a person goes to hell, this, this is food for thought. First of all, to hell, <clears throat> according to the scripture, our spirit returns to God. Mm-hmm. Our soul is what exists in hell. Mm-hmm. So your soul is the real you. It's mm-hmm. your thinking, right? Mm-hmm. It's your consciousness, all right? Yeah. So when he says you would not allow, and again, I would recommend reading um, in this version, um, the King James and the New King James, because it uses the actual Greek word, which is Hades. Okay. David was looking into the future. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. Now the word spirit here, uh, the word holy is hagios. All right, that's the Greek word for holy. And the word spirit is pneuma. It's where we get pneumatics from, right? Mm. Meaning air. Mm-hmm. It's, it's his holy air or holy breath. Mm. So the Bible says the father hands Jesus his spirit and Jesus begins to pour it out all over the earth. Wow. Mm. wow. Now, um, for David himself never ascended into heaven, yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in my in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. And the reason why Peter said that David himself never ascended to heaven. See, we have to understand. Um, and then I'm going to wrap this up right now. So uh, uh, <clears throat> that prior to Christ's resurrection, all believers went to a place called paradise. You can find this in Luke chapter 16. I'm going back. Just look up the 
Lazarus and the rich man. Mm-hmm. Now, some people would say that that's a parable, but a, you know, a parable is a story, mm-hmm. right? Um, that has a a a spiritual parallel, mm-hmm. like a a greater point. Um, but it's not. You you uh, theologians say that it is not a story and can't be because this is the only one of Jesus' stories where he actually gives a name. Yeah, that means he says it was an actual person. Mm-hmm. It's a man by the name of Lazarus, mm-hmm. and there was a rich man who came and walked by him every day. And he, this rich man, never wanted to help this poor man out. Mm-hmm. He said, when Lazarus died, he went into Abraham's bosom, right, which was a place called mm-hmm. paradise. Mm-hmm. When the rich man died, the Bible says he immediately went into hell. And the Bible says the rich man is able to look across and see mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lazarus. Now, this is not the same Lazarus who was resurrected, but he's able to see this man named Lazarus, this poor man. And he's with Abraham and all of the patriarchs and matriarchs mm-hmm. right? Yes. in this holding place. Um, again, uh, when we get into some further study, um, this is why the Bible says Jesus took captivity captive mm-hmm. and led them free. Meaning he went to, uh, he went to hell. Mm-hmm. He preached, this Bible says, he preached Mm -hmm. to the prisoners Mm -hmm. in hell, Mm -hmm. the gospel, and then led them back to heaven. You had a question? Does it say if any of them actually wanted to, like, stay down? I don't think they would have wanted to stay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, But this is also the reason why when Jesus is on the cross and the 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 other um, the thief mm-hmm. says to him, says, Lord, remember me when you go into your kingdom. Jesus doesn't say, This day shalt thou be with me in heaven, that this day shall thou be with me in paradise. This word paradise is the same um, usage of the word Abraham's bosom that Jesus refers to. It was a holding place. Mm-hmm. Remember when, when Adam and Eve died, the Bible says he said, From the earth you came to the earth you shall return. Mm-hmm. So the you know, hell operates in the center of the earth, right? Um, even Jesus says that as Jonah was in the heart of the belly uh, of the, it was in the whale. belly of the whale. So shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days. See, there was a purpose to him going there, mm-hmm. and this is why one of the gospels I'll be able to tell you um, next time. I just have to look it up. One of the gospels actually says when Jesus was resurrected, they saw other prophets resurrected too. Many mm-hmm. of the old mm-hmm. dead had been resurrected as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll bring that to you next week. Yes. Um, but but this is the, the, this is why he like Peter is and how does Peter even know this? Peter said David never went to heaven. He didn't ascend mm-hmm. to heaven. Never ascended into heaven. Yet he said, "The Lord said to my Lord, mm-hmm. sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet." So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced through their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, "Brothers, what should we do?" And we're going to stop there. Do we have any questions? Any thoughts? Um, I know I ran on a little bit. I get excited about this. I really <laughs> Any thoughts? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, um, next week for sure we're going to finish this chapter. Yes. Right? Um, let's uh, hopefully start and start chapter three. Uh, and we're, we're not going to spend as much time, but there's so much. In this particular chapter that we really, because this, this is what we refer to as the birth of the church. Mm-hmm. The church took its legs at this point. Before they were in hiding, now they're coming out of hiding. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Now the gospel is being preached. Right? And so, it, you know, um, so. Being bold. Being bold. Yeah. Being bold. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking time and all the explanations. It's, it's well, really been well, interesting. Yeah. Um, so, um. And uh, before we close, I'm going to share my, my t- and I think I did this last week, but I'm going to share my testimony as to how the, the, the Lord, uh, how I experienced the, um, the feeling of the Holy Spirit. So uh, again, I think I was about 18 or 19 years old. I was really seeking God, really seeking God. And, you know, I was in church. I don't know if you've ever been in church and, you know, maybe the preacher is saying, you know, everybody's going to receive the Holy Spirit. And, you know, he, he may do something. And he at that time, I'll tell you what he did. He's like, when, when I wave my hand, people are going to see the Holy Spirit, right? And I'm, I got my hands up. I'm like, yeah, but, so he does it. And a whole bunch of people start speaking 
you know, receiving the spirit of God. And I'm sitting here and I got my hands up. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. I'm not speaking it. Oh, my gosh. And I'm so I began to pray to God. I said, God, I really want this. This, this gift I want to experience. I just want, I want to be, have more of you. So I, so I began, I read a, a book. It was a great book called The Seven Steps of the, um, Receiving the Holy Spirit um, by Kenneth, Kenneth Hagen. And, um, you know, um, but it was just, you know, the way it put it. So I was like, okay. So I, I read the whole book. It was a little tiny book. It was like a real short read, really good. Um, and uh, when I finished reading the book, he, you know, one of the principles he said he, he pointed us to, he said, all flesh, meaning it's available to all of us, right? So I stopped feeling like it was only, it's only for a few, a certain mm-hmm. few. So I had to accept, for me, this is how it worked for me. I had to realize it was for me too. Then he said, you know, God says in his word, ask and you shall receive, seeking you shall find. He said, so in the spirit, in the kingdom, asking, you should see asking as receiving. Because mm-hmm. he said, ask and you shall receive. So when I asked, I said, God, I'm asking. I know you don't want I know you're not going to deny me more of you, mm-hmm. right? I know you're not going to deny me. So I went in my room, and I'm in my room. I closed my door. I locked my door. I was in there for hours, mm-hmm. and I'm praying. But I wasn't praying like I normally would pray because I know we'd be on my knees. So God, God, you know, do this, do this. I literally got up, and I had such a joy. Once I got to that last page of that book, because I was so proud that I finished a, a book. Uh, <laughs> but I got up, and I began. I had so much joy, and I was walking around the room, and I'm walking around. I said, God, thank you so much, God. I thank you that I received your, your gift, your Holy Spirit. God, I thank you. God, you're so amazing. You're so wonderful. God, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I said, God, I'm not. And I said to God, I said, God, I am not leaving this room until I receive your gift. And I said, God, and I began to walk around the room. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. My mom had pulled up. She was going to the laundromat at the time because we didn't have a washer and dryer. And she came home and she had these big old black bags. And I remember her calling, John, get out here and help me get these bags. Right? <laughs> now I got five of her siblings. I don't know why I had to be called to help with the bags. So I, I and I can't exaggerate this. I, I'm in there and say, okay. I said, God, I know I just promised you that I wasn't going to leave here until I experienced it. I said, but God, you also said in your word that I have to honor my father and my mother. I said, so God, I'm going to go down. I'm going to help mom with the bags. I said, I'm going to come right back up here and I'm going to finish. So I go, and as I open the door and cross the doorpost, the spirit of God fell on me. And I begin to, I begin, and I, I, I experienced it. So I'm, I'm not telling folks stuff that I didn't experience. I experienced it. It fell on me. And I, as I hit the doorpost, as if God honored my faith, it was my faith. God honored my faith. I said, God, I'm coming right back up here. And that's why the, the, the name of the ministry, part of the reason why the name of the ministry is he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. It's like Psalm 91. Mm-hmm. It's like getting in the presence of God and getting so much of God that, that it leaks out of you. Yes. My cup runs over. Yes. Yes. We could have gone with Psalm 23, but Psalm 91 <laughs> was favored by me. <laughs> Dwelling in God's presence. Yes. Yeah. I'm letting them in every room. Every room. Let's close our eyes and go before the Lord. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time. Thank you for this time with you, O Lord. Hallelujah. To, to, to look at your word, to study your word. Lord God, we give you praise, boy, and honor. Lord, maybe there's someone out here today. Maybe you're here in the building. Maybe you're watching via the live, and you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your, uh, in the pardon of your sins. And you need to know him. The Lord is, he wants access to the whole house. The house of your heart. Today, you can call on the name of Jesus and he'll set you free. And he'll be the mediator between you and God and give you and to close in that relationship. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter what you did 15 minutes ago. God says, I'm here. The blood cleanses all. If that's you and you say, you know what, I have not made that commitment and I need to make that commitment. Yes. Just, you know, raise your hand wherever you are and say this with me. Lord Jesus, 
come into my heart. I confess that I'm a sinner. I'm in need of a savior. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. But I also believe that God raised you up. The father raised you up. And you have all power in your your hands. Come into my heart. Make me new. I make you my Lord and my savior. Lead me. Guide me. Help me to walk with you, God. Help me to clean all those areas of my life that um, are not... Um, that are not pleasing unto you. But come in first. I need you to come in first. In Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, then the most high God of the universe has entered your heart. The next step is to get committed. Get committed. Get committed to his word. Get committed to his word. Just try to absorb everything you can. Listen, maybe you're out there. You don't, you don't have a church home. You need a church home. You say, I, I, I I like what you guys are doing here. Say, I want to make this my church home. Listen, we're not going to make a spectacle of that. But if that's you, maybe you're online. You can just go to our website or you can just type in join and one of our leaders will reach out to you. Glory to God. Let's just give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, before we close out, we are going to, you know, um, we're going to remind folks we do have service on this Sunday. Service yes. prayer time starts at 8.30, right? Um, and the service starts at 9 a.m. On July the 8th, listen, you can go to our website, look up Spiritual Gifts Workshop. There, There is a fee for that because we are feeding you and there we have to, the, the space is not free, all right? Um, but it is going to be feeding you spiritually as well. Amen. So with that being said, the prophetess to meet her. Prophetess to meet her. Yes. Amazing prophetess. Mm-hmm. So uh, with that being said, uh, oh, also, listen, if you if this ministry is a blessing to you, um, um, consider sowing a seed. We have uh, Cash App, if you use digital, that's uh, dollar sign Psalm 91 Ministries. Uh, or you can go to the link in the chat if you're watching me live. Or we should have papers here if you're um, um, if you're in the building. You can either scan that or, um, or use the QR code. Amen. Amen. And then lastly, if you're going to make a donation to basket, mm-hmm. just place the donation to basket on your way out mm-hmm. as we uh, as we close. Amen. Checks can be made. Checks can be made payable to Psalm 91 Ministries. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for, for joining us. God bless you. Uh, first lady, just close us out in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this time of of fellowship, of of diving into your word, of of, a time of of, uh, interacting one with another and and understanding your word better, Father. I ask that you help us to hide it in our hearts, that it takes root and that it grows, Father, and that it will produce fruit, Lord. Father, we ask that as we leave this place, we do not leave your presence with your protection guiding us all the way. Father, bless even our homes as we go to them. Let it be in peace. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen. 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 Have a good evening.